Well, welcome to day three of the three-day fast, three-day hike challenge. <laughs> I've got a special guest with me today, the famous rock painter, Lori. <laughs> She came out to make sure we deposited today's rock in a beautiful spot. That's right. And um, she's just gonna hike a little out and back and go back to the car and I'll complete the, the segment and she's gonna pick me up at the other end. Mm -hmm. Today's rock is going to be hope. Hope. <laughs> so we have faith, love, and hope. <laughs> so, and the greatest of those is? Love. That's right. <laughs> so this is day three of my fast and how am I feeling? Well. <laughs> So last night, yesterday after the hike, I got home and I was like really, really exhausted and really well spent, you know, uh -huh. and um, and really hungry. And um, so I wasn't feeling that great. I took a shower, I took a little nap. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then around dinner time, I really was tempted. There was a piece of pita bread. Oh, right? oh yeah. That was sitting there. And I was like, let me just have a little piece of that. And <laughs> she goes, no, 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 don't do it. And so, yeah, I didn't, and I, because it just seemed like, wow, can I really make it another 24 hours? <laughs> I was so hungry. But one thing about fasting is that you do get like these sudden uh, hunger pains, sudden like urges to eat. But if you just wait a little bit, it does pass. It kind of goes in cycles. So don't feel like you're going to feel that way <laughs> for the rest of the time that you're fasting. It does go away. Although you and, did have some warm bone broth. Yes, that, that helps was... a lot. And uh, so I slept really well last night. Woke up this morning feeling really good, but then a little bit later I had some some tea, some green tea on an empty stomach, and that was a big mistake. <laughs> I felt really nauseous after that, and uh, didn't feel well, and really didn't even feel like hiking today. But it kind of passed, and uh, so we're out here today, and uh, we're going to complete this this mission, right? <laughs> and uh, the first thing we got to do is find a good spot for your for your rock. So that's, yeah. that's what's for that hope rock. The hope rock. <laughs> Here's where we came that one time for church in the wild. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was fun. That was a good time. A beautiful spot with the stream coming down through here. Today is kind of a gloomy day, so it doesn't really pop like normally, but it's still pretty nice. That's going to be too far off the trail, probably to put your rock, but it would be pretty on that green background. Yeah, it would. Oh, wait, up here some more moss. Let's see. Oh, what about right there? That's the, that's the one you met? Yeah, just see how it looks. Oh, that's beautiful. It's pretty there. You like that spot? See, if you're walking down the trail, you'll be able to see that. <laughs> and everybody, this is the popular section of the trail. A lot of people walk by every day, and I think it's going to give them some hope. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're at the bridge, so yep. I guess I'm gonna head back. So it's been 0.86, so by the time you get back, it'll be 1.7 miles back to the car. You're gonna go kill some time, right? And then come pick me up at the at the end point. At the end, yeah. Which is Falls Dam. Dam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Careful. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Love you. Love you too. All right, we'll see you later. I'm taking the high road. Okay. <laughs> bye. So at dinner time tonight, I'm going to break my fast. It will be 72 hours since my last meal, and I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, what have I learned from this three days of fasting? It's my first time doing it. And uh, well, for one thing, I definitely have an appreciation for the food that the Lord provides for us. And I have a lot of empathy for those who don't have enough resources, who don't have enough food, for those who are starving or just hungry in general, like just don't have uh, enough food to uh, sustain them. Uh, it is really a difficult thing. I certainly have a lot more empathy for those people. We do um, Instacart and DoorDash and Uber Eats uh, in the evenings together. And uh, that involves picking up restaurant food that smells really good and putting it in the car and taking it to people. It involves going to the grocery store and picking out produce and meat and, <laughs> and other items for people. And uh, I did that even though I was fasting. And I thought that would be really difficult. I thought that would be uh, a strong temptation, but um, it did smell really good. And it made me really long for for tonight when I get to break my fast. But it didn't really, uh, I wasn't really tempted at that point to uh, 
to break my fast. Your senses are enhanced when you're fasting. It's like, um, even when I would drink that drink that had the electrolyte in it, it was sweet. It just tasted like so good, so amazing. And normally I would just drink that and not think anything of it. <laughs> I think it did enhance my senses. Um, I lost six pounds, uh, 6.2 pounds uh, in the last three days. In general, feeling pretty good, except for the occasional um, feeling of weakness or uh, a dizziness or hunger that comes, like, and like I said earlier, those typically just are temporary. And I think part of it also is that I'm trying to hike at the same time. And normally, if I'm eating normally, and I go for a hike, I am starving at the end. I, I just come home and wolf down food, wolf down snacks, pretzels, whatever I can find to replenish what I uh, exerted on that hike. And so when you're fasting and hiking, <laughs> it's even more of a challenge. And uh, it's been quite a great experience. And uh, that's a lot of time to spend with the Lord. A lot of time just walking solo here with the camera turned off, just praying about my family, praying for the world, the nation, lots of things going on. And, uh, and I do feel like I've heard some, some clear direction in some of the things I was praying for from the Lord. And uh, I guess I can attribute that to fasting because uh, getting the flesh out of the way and uh, enhancing your connection to God through his spirit. I just keep hearing a lot about the spirit versus the flesh. Living by the spirit or living by the flesh. How the spirit is eternal and the flesh is temporal. And uh, we should never compromise and trade off things that would satisfy the flesh uh, if it's going to damage the things of the spirit, <laughs> things that are spiritual. We should never take risks with um, things that our flesh wants, whether it be temptations or sins or gluttony or greed or unforgiveness or whatever it might be. And we should never let that control us. Even Jesus, when he was here, he said, you know, if, you're, if your eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it away. If your hand offends you, cut it off and cast it away. Because it would be better to go through this life with one hand or one eye than to be cast into hell. And uh, so, yes, Jesus was very loving. And he accepted everybody and he met with everybody. But he called them to repent and change. He called them to follow him. And uh, sometimes that means cutting off areas of your life that you were, that were habits, that were addictions, that were uh, just part of your life and cutting them off and getting rid of them. Asking the Lord for help with that. Say, Lord, I want to break free of this addiction or I want to be able to forgive this person. I don't have the strength. And uh, let the Lord help you with that. It's not about trying really hard to um, please God. It's about surrendering more to Him and letting His strength flow through you. I think this, this three-day journey has reiterated that all again and again to me, that that's the main topic that He wanted to, to convey to me, the main theme. And, uh, and I'm sharing it with you guys because there might be somebody out there that this is meaningful to. There might be somebody out there that it's going to be beneficial to them. I hope it's a blessing to you. Lord, I just thank you for this beautiful day. It's just so pleasant out here and the wind is blowing. Trees are moving. It's just just a cool day. I'm just really loving it. I love the warm ground. Uh, you've made uh, a nice soft trail to walk on and uh, just having a great time. I'm feeling really good on this third day of the fast. I feel really, really rejuvenated today uh, after a rough start this morning, but right now I'm feeling great. I'm going to hike the remainder of today uh, barefoot. Um, I just feel more connected to the Lord when I'm barefoot and it's just my personal preference. I feel there's spiritual benefits. I feel there's uh, physical benefits to doing it. And I made a whole video on it if you're interested in why I hike barefoot. Most of my videos, I'm barefoot. 
So if you want to check that out, I'll put a little link up there. Today's the end of February, and it is 67 degrees out. I think it's going to hit 70 today, so it's really mild. It is windy. Beautiful day to hike barefoot. I mean, you've got the soft uh, pine straw, the soft leaves, the cool mud, the roots. It's just amazing to feel the different textures and temperatures. Yesterday, uh, I was feeling really weak in the legs at some point. I got to Blue Jay Point and uh, I stopped for a drink and took my shoes off and I walked for about a mile or so. And it really rejuvenated me. It really felt good to get out of those, those hot hiking boots and just let my feet touch the ground, touch the earth. And uh, it really, really did give me a boost of energy. You know, the Lord, He created this earth for us to live on it, for us to be immersed in it. And, uh, when we walk barefoot, or we walk in leather, sold shoes, we're making contact with the earth. They say that the earth itself is the strongest antioxidant, the most powerful antioxidant out there. But today, we live in cities and high-rises. We walk in synthetic shoes. We don't hardly ever make contact uh, with the earth that we're created. You know, there's a lot of research that's been done over the past decade that show the health benefits of grounding to the earth. Uh, and uh, it was just one paper after the other. I cover a lot of that research in my other video. Um, but what is interesting is that we're just discovering now all the amazing health benefits that have been there all along. God's wisdom, he created this earth. And he created it to be a place where we can live and a place where we can prosper. That's beautiful stream. <laughs> and uh, if he designed it, so that the animals and the people would be in contact with the earth and receive those benefits. And when we're disconnected from the earth, <laughs> we start having some health issues, uh, mostly related to inflammation. Inflammation then leads to many other things. Um, and so it's kind of true with our Christian walk as well. When we're connected to God on a daily basis, we can prosper and we can live out the life that he intended for us. But when we separate ourselves from God, when we're distant from him, when we're mad at God for some period of time and we just refuse to talk to him, well, we're disconnected and we no longer can receive those benefits that he has for us, those blessings. And so I just encourage you today to uh, to reconnect with God and, uh, and uh, make him a priority in your life. Make God your number one priority and uh, just watch how things transform because the Bible says that we should seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto us. Now this is the upper end of Falls Lake. Falls Lake goes all the way across the uh, northern part of Raleigh and it is our main water source here in Raleigh. It is a man-made lake. Uh, they took the Noose River, which God made, <laughs> and they built a dam up here many years ago and uh, backed it up to a really nice lake. Lord, I just thank you for giving me the strength to persevere for three days and for getting out here and hiking the beautiful creation. I just want to pray for anyone watching who is thinking about fasting. I pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll help them through it, help them every step of the way. And uh, Lord, I pray that during that time of fasting, that they would hear your voice more clearly and that they would spend the time that they would have been spending preparing meals and eating Spend that time in prayer and uh, reconnect with you at a deep level. And uh, so Lord, I just thank you for all the blessings that you pour out of us every day. And uh, I'll never take a meal for granted again. And I just thank you. I give great gratitude for every, every piece of fruit I eat, every snack I eat, every meal I eat. Because Lord, you are the great provider. And I just love you and I uh, ask for Lord to bless everyone who is coming along on this journey with me helping the Lord to follow you more closely in this next year and more deeply. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm heading down now to meet Lori. She's coming to pick me up right down here at the bottom of this hill. And uh, I just want to thank you for joining me on this three-day adventure. And if you like this content, I invite you to like this video. And uh, if you would consider subscribing to the channel, 
this channel is all about getting outdoors and God's creation and uh, learning to be uh, closer to Him and learning to follow Jesus. And I pray God's blessings over you and your family and uh, may you draw closer to the Lord this year.